السلام علیکم آئی ایم آمنا حیدر لیکچرر انسٹیٹیوٹ آف بزنس اسٹڈیز آئی ایم ہیئر ود اے اسکرین کاسٹ آف انٹروڈکشن ٹو بزنس کورس دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی اینڈ دا ٹاپک دیٹ وی ووڈ بی ڈسکسنگ ٹوڈے از کلاسز آف شیئرس اینڈ وی ووڈ ڈسکس شیئر ہولڈرس رائٹ moving towards the topic so in today's lecture we would discuss classes of shares we would discuss shareholders right that includes receiving of dividends sellage of shares voting rights rights related to conduction of meeting rights related to proxies rights related to removal of auditors right related to board of directors shareholders rights related to increase in capital and rights related to books of accounts so moving towards our very first topic that is classes of shares this topic is in continuation with our previous lecture i already discussed equity shares in my previous lecture today we would be discussing preferred shares so preferred shares are those securities that represent uh, the ownership in a corporation and that have a little priority claim over Uh, the equity shares we can also call equity shares as common shares on uh, the company's assets and earning so we said that the preferred shares have priority uh, over common shares on company assets and uh, the earnings so these preferred shares are uh, a bit senior than the equity shares Uh, but are uh, relatively juniors to bonds in terms of claim on assets uh the uh, uh, those uh, the holders of preferred stock are also prioritized over holders of common stock in case of dividend payments uh one of the feature of uh, preferred shares is a preference in assets upon liquidation so these share provide their holders with uh with a kind of priority uh, over common stock holders to claim the company's asset upon uh, liquidation uh the the shares provide dividend payments to a uh, shareholders the payment can be fixed or it can be a uh, floating based on an uh, based on an interest rate benchmark uh, uh, preferred shareholders have a priority in dividend payments also over the holders of the uh, equity shareholders when we talk about preferred shareholders uh, the shares do not assign uh, voting rights to their holders however some preferred shares uh, allow its holders to vote on extraordinary events depends upon with which features the preferred shareholders has been issued 
Traffic shares may be converted to a predetermined number of equity shares. Some Fluffer shares specify the date at which the shares can be converted, while others require uh, the, the approval from the board of directors uh, for that kind of conversion. Some uh, Fluffer shares comes with the callable features. That means that the share can be repurchased by the issuer at specified dates. So uh, the advantage for corporation to issue profit shares is that they do not force uh, the issuer to pay dividend to shareholders. Uh, for example, if the company uh, think that they do not have enough funds to pay uh, dividends to the shareholder, uh, they can just defer the payment. So that is uh, one of the advantage uh, preferred shares provide to the corporation. So preferred shares can be an ad attractive uh, option for investors. Uh, um, it can be attractive because these shares provide their shoulders with a fixed income in the form of dividend payments. And the other attractiveness of preferred share for investors could be that they are more uh, investors with preferred stock are in more secure position relative to common shareholders in the event of liquidation because they have a priority in claiming the company's asset. So moving towards our next topic, that is rights of shareholders. General management fund in public corporations, ownership and control are uh, somewhat separated. The shareholders own the company through their ownership of a stock. But power to manage is vested in the directors. In larger corporation, most of the ownership of the corporation is diluted across its numerous shareholders, many of whom have no involvement with the corporation other than through their stock ownership. On the other hand, the issue of separation and control is generally irrelevant to closely held corporation. Since in, uh, in many instances, the shareholders are the same people who manage and work for the corporations. So shareholders do retain some degree of control. What type of control? Like they can uh, elect the directors. Um, They have some degree of control uh, when they are uh, when they are in the meeting because uh, they provide they are given the right to have a say in company's meeting. They can cast their vote and through casting their votes they can uh, they can uh, make certain differences uh, on certain extraordinary matters such as if they want to mend the article of incorporation or they want to they have a say in the liquidation so in that way they can uh, have certain degree of control
The next is entitlement to receive the dividend. Dividend is a distribution of profits by a corporation to its shareholders. When a corporation earns a profit or it earns a surplus, it is able to pay a portion of the profit as a dividend to shareholders. So corporations are distributing profits in the form of uh, dividends. So each shareholder has the right to receive them. Dividend amount are uh, determined by the corporate officers or in other words, these dividend amount are determined by the board of directors and not by the ownership in trust of the sh uh, shareholders. The dividend amount can fluctuate on yearly basis depending on the corporation's earning for uh, that specific year. So with that in mind, uh, corporation with low earnings or with net losses or have some other plans uh, with the profits to improve their business, they may not uh, pay the dividends. However, corporation must pay every shareholder a dividend if they are dis uh, distributing them and cannot select just a few to pay profits and uh, neglect the rest. The shareholders can sell his shares at will. Like we said that uh, one of the features of uh, shares is that they are volunt it's a voluntary association in case of cooperation. You can stay in the company as long as the shareholders want. And when they want to leave, uh, that kind of joint stock company, they can transfer their shares to someone else. So the uh, share transfer is required uh, to be registered and share certificates duly transferred in favor of transferee are to be uh, issued within 45 days from the date of application for transfer of shares. Uh, that transfer deeds are accepted by the directors and entered into the register of members of the company. So the Company Act uh, regards the share in a company as, um, as a movable property. And it empowers every shareholder to transfer his share in the manner that is provided in the articles. So the basic objective of establishing public company is to make the shares freely transferable. This is not a right conferred by, by the article, but it's a power uh, cast upon every shareholder uh, by the express provision of Companies Act. So uh, even the article cannot take away this power altogether but can impose uh, reasonable restriction regarding the mode of transfer. Voting rights. Every uh, shareholder has the right uh, to cast their votes on company's important issues. Uh, shareholders are asked by the company uh, to vote on important matters which uh, 
in one way or in other way that could affect the company. Shareholders should carefully consider the decision to benefit from exercising their voting rights. Um, every shareholder has votes uh, proportionate to the paid up value of shares carrying voting rights held by him. So voting right, voting right is the right of shareholders of a corporation to vote on matters of corporate policy, including decision on uh, the makeup of board of directors, uh, issuing new securities, initiating corporate actions like mergers or acquisition, um, approving dividends, etc. It is common for shareholders to voice their vote by, by proxy also. The next right of a shareholder is to be part of company's meeting. Every company must hold an annual general meeting once a year. Shareholders whose names are on the register have the right to attend such meeting and they must be sent notice of the meeting at least 21 days before the conduction of the meeting. All the rules regarding the meeting uh, all the information regarding the meeting about the date, location, agenda, uh, the issues to be decided at the meeting, all these things must be uh, sent to the shareholders before conduction of the meeting. So the notice of the general meeting specifying the day, time and place of the meeting and the statement of business to be transacted with all material fact is required to be sent to every member of the company at least 21 days before the meeting. So the corporation must hold at least one meeting of shareholder each year. The board of directors or shareholders representing at least 10% of the stock may call a special shareholder meeting at any time unless a different threshold number is stated in the article. The right to appoint proxy a proxy is the representative of the shareholder. A proxy may be a person who stands in for the shareholder or may be a written instrument by which the shareholder cast her vote before the shareholder meeting. Proxies are usually solicited by and given to management either to vote for proposal or people named in the proxy or to vote however the proxy holder wishes. So the shareholders can cast their votes personally at a company's meeting. However, any shareholder entitled to attend and to vote at a meeting can appoint another person as his proxy to attend and to vote in place of him. Such a proxy have the right of attending and voting at a meeting as available to the shareholder. 
a shareholder is not entitled to appoint more than one proxy for any one meeting. A proxy must be a shareholder unless the article of the company provides otherwise. The notice of a meeting must specify the shareholder right to appoint a proxy and the right of such a proxy as to attending and voting at a meeting. A proxy form must accompany such notice of the meeting. Right to appoint and remove auditors. Auditors are external accountants uh, who are appointed by the company uh, to check out their financial statements. The first auditors um, are usually appointed by the uh, directors within 60 days of incorporation subject to certain provision who stands retired at the conclusion of the first annual general meeting. However, if the directors fail to appoint first audit, auditor or auditors, the members in general meeting may appoint first auditor uh, uh, at the meeting. The remuneration of the auditor appointed by the member is also fixed by the members in the annual general meeting. Members can remove the auditors through passing of special resolution in a general meeting in accordance with the procedure laid down uh, in the Act. Right to elect and to remove the directors. Shareholders have a right to elect the directors. The shareholders, as the owner of the company, elect the directors to run the business uh, on, the, on behalf of the rest of the shareholders. And these board of directors are held accountable for their acts. First directors are usually appointed by, uh, by the virtue of article of association All the subscribers are deemed to be directors of the company. They shall hold office until the holding of first annual general meeting. Subsequent directors are elected in the annual general meeting of the company for a time span of three years. The shareholder can also, uh, they can remove a director by passing um, a resolution in the annual general meeting. Increase capital. From time to time, a company may wish to issue further capital. As a shareholder, they have the preemptive right to participate in the rights issue. This is where the company asks the existing shareholder if they want to buy new shares in the company in proportion of the existing shares held by each member. Such offer is made by a notice sent to the members specifying the number of shares to which the member is entitled and prescribing time limit within which if offer not accepted will be deemed to be declined. 
The company sends the prescribed circular to the members along with the notice making the said offer. If they decline to subscribe for the further issue or make no response to the issue, the directors may allot the shares to that extent as they deem fit. Shareholders are legally entitled to inspect the records of the corporation in which they hold shares. These records include the Article of Incorporation, Bylaws and Corporations Resolutions. As a general rule, shareholder who want certain records must also have a proper purpose such as to determine the property of the company's dividend policy or to ascertain the company's true financial worth. So if a shareholders want to assess the company's true financial worth, they can inspect the company's books of accounts and they have the right to, ins uh, to inspect the company records. A shareholder motivation is an important factor in knowing and in determining whether the purpose is a proper one or is a, is a legitimate one. So in case of books of accounts, every shareholder has the right to inspect the register of the directors or officer of the company. The shareholders have the right to inspect uh, the contracts, the arrangements and appointments having directors interest. Shareholders also have the right to inspect the copies of instrument creating mortgage and charges and companies register of mortgages. They have the right to inspect auditor's report. They have the right to inspect various registers regarding members and debentures holders, etc. So now we will conclude our today's lectures. As the owners of the company, the shareholders have a unique relationship to the board and with that of the management. They must rely on board of directors whom they elect for managing the affairs of the company using their right to vote at shareholders meeting. To protect their long-term economic interest, shareholders have a responsibility to monitor the conduct of the board of directors and exercise their voting right by casting thoughtful and informed votes that safeguard their financial and other interests. Although the effective exercise of voting right is the key mechanism by which the shareholder can play a role in uh, the governance of the corporation. It is also important that uh, the shareholder always keep a watchful eye on the affairs of the company and ensure that the management is acting and they are performing their duties in compliance with the provision of the law. So shareholders uh, should promote more effective corporate governance in the company and ensure that the corporate governance practice meet high standards and accountability. Shareholders must ensure that the affairs of the company are being conducted by the management in the best interest of the shareholders. 
This is the reference book that I use for today's lecture. That's it for today. Thank you.